folks, Tom Vassell here and welcome to Best of Publishers. Today we're taking a look at Steve Jackson Games. Now Steve Jackson Games is known for essentially one game and that's Munchkin. Now that's not the only game that they're known for. Other people have various games that, that they really love from Steve Jackson. Munchkin is not going to show up on my top 10 list, but you got to talk about Munchkin. Steve Jackson posts their uh, annual reports to their shareholders every year and every year they list all their sellings of their games and <laughs> Munchkin is like the top, is like 18 of the top 20 every time. So it does really well for them and you can't begrudge a company for selling a game that's gonna do well. And a lot of people like Munchkin. Munchkin, a silly game, uh, artwork from John Koblick uh, where you are trying to level people up and fight monsters and everyone else tries to stop you. Silly, fun D&D &D style stuff. Um, there are also another game that's not on my top 10 that's very popular from them, although it's more of a niche thing is Illuminati. Illuminati, the game of, well, the Illuminati and controlling. There's both Illuminati and Illuminati New World Order, which was a card game, collectible card game version, although they made a box with everything in one box, which was neat. Um, not really necessarily my style. I feel like it's aged a bit, but that's also one. Another one I didn't mention that will probably a lot of people love is Car Wars. Although I'm looking for the new edition of that, maybe I'll enjoy it. These are my 10 favorite games from Steve Jackson Games. Number 10 is Port Royal. Now, this one is only 10 because it hasn't come out yet, but I love Port Royal, Port Royale, and Steve Jackson doing it is a surprise to me because well, I just wasn't expecting that. But uh, I love this Push Your Luck game, and probably when it comes out, it will be my favorite Steve Jackson game. Number nine is Zombie Dice. Although they made different versions of this, I think they made a hunting version, but Zombie Dice is pretty simple. You pull some dice, you roll them, and you get some points, and then you decide do you want to keep going or do you want to uh, stop and take and bank your points. But if that's too many times you get beat up too much, you will get no points at all. It's a variation on greed and other games where you're rolling dice to get points, but it works really well, simple and fun, so I like it. Number eight is X-Bugs. X-Bugs is a tiddlywink style game uh, that Steve Jackson made a long time ago. They had two uh, different um, sets, I believe, each that came with two different factions, and you would snap the bugs and they would land somewhere, and if the bug landed on top of something else, uh, different, it, you, would, you would kill that bug, but different bugs had different abilities. Simple, silly, fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, number seven is Mars Attacks the Dice Game. This is another push your luck style dice game where you're rolling dice and trying to destroy different cities, trying to roll combinations of things. Another push your luck style game, uh, but with the theme of Mars Attacks, did not think it would be that good, but it was a lot of fun. Number six is Nightmare Chess. Now, Nightmare Chess is a game that, uh, I mean, I, you would have to kind of maybe talk me into playing it, but I, when I do play it, it's so fun. It basically adds special cards. Bruno Feduti designed this. It adds special cards to chess. So you're put, moving a piece and then playing a card that can completely change the course of the game. Really crazy chaotic. Most people will hate it if you like chess, but I like it. Uh, number five is Nanook. Nanook is a party style game where you're going out hunting and you're trying to get other people to join you. It's not quite a social deduction game, but it kind of leans in that direction as you're trying to get people to join you as you go out on your hunt. And if enough people join you, the hunt will succeed. Number four is the Awful Green Things from Outer Space. This is a two-player game in which one person is playing the people on this spaceship that's being invaded by the other players, Awful Green Things from Outer Space. So these green aliens are coming on and you're trying to fight them off and you have all these weapons on board like a hair dryer and different things, but you don't know which one works against the aliens. So it's kind of a test out, you know, you're going to try different things and this one, oh, this one makes them grow. And when you finally figure out what does destroy them, then you need to destroy them as quickly as you can before they take you over. Very fun little game and a great little theme. Number three is Castellan. Castellan was sold in a two, two player sets, but you can mix them together where you're placing walls around, making little castles, and trying to control different areas. Think of it as that game where you draw the squares on dots, but more bigger and grandiose with some really nice components. A nice abstract game, Castellan. Number two is Ogre. Now, they just released this nice, smaller edition of Ogre, but, you know, of course, there was the original Ogre in a bag, and then there was the huge Kickstarter grandiose Ogre, which was really too big. But the game itself was really quite good. One person is controlling one, usually, one big ogre giant mega tank. Uh, and uh, the other person um, is a bolo, if you will. 
the other person is controlling a whole bunch of forces and you're fighting against this one big mega tank. I like that. It's, it's fun to play one big thing against a bunch of little things, a big Goliath, a bunch, a bunch of little Davids. Uh, it's cool, it's neat, but it's also really simple and easy to play. And my favorite game from Steve Jackson Games is Revolution. Revolution, um, a game in which multiple people are doing revolutions at the same time. A blind bidding system where you uh, put money and uh, blackmail and force on different, char on different uh, characters, using those characters to gain uh, control of different regions. Really entertaining, especially when you add one of the two expansions. Both expansions, you don't need both. You, one or the other is great. They add even more flavor to the game. A lot of fun. So those are my favorite Steve Jackson games. Steve Jackson has done a lot of interesting games over the year, from Ninja Burger to Frag. You know, there's all kinds of games uh, to Chess Geek and things. A lot of people will like a lot of their games. Uh, as, as for me, they're not usually my style, but they made some good ones, and these were my 10 favorite. Tell me what yours are in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Best of Steve Jackson. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.